Thank you. Um, obviously, uh, you know, by the time you get to this point, um, there's a, uh, you know, an anxious, anxiousness to play. You know, you've um, been kind of waiting all year for this opportunity. And um, um, everybody knows what's at stake. And, and certainly everybody knows that the teams that are here are, are all capable of winning and going to the Final Four. Um, so it's the most exciting part of the year up to this up to this point, and um, you know we're fortunate to be here given everything that's transpired over the course of the last five months, and um, you know not crazy about our matchup, you know uh, <laughs> um, they're uh, they're a unique team that uh, poses unique unique problems, so um, we're. We're, we've got our hands full tomorrow, and uh, um, but I know our players are looking forward to it. Start down here with Roger. Roger Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American. You, you did mention the other day, Gino, that you, when you watched Ohio State, you knew that they'd be here because they did present some challenges. What are those unique challenges that they present to you? They play a little different than um, than most teams in the sense that. Um, they do a couple things exceptionally well. You know, they get out in transition as fast and as aggressively as, as any team that I've seen. And defensively, they create um, a lot of um, a lot of chaotic situations for you if you're not uh, if you're not prepared to handle it. Um, <clears throat> so those two things, um, in and of itself, you know, you might play a team that presses, you know, which certainly we have, or you might play a team that is, uh, exceptionally, you know, good in transition. Um, but they do both and, and, um, and they've got, you know, their whole team now, you know, they were missing a couple kids early in the season when they went through a little bit of a lull, but they seem to be fully healthy and um, they've got great leaders, uh, great role players. Um, I think Kevin has done a remarkable job with them. Um, you know, there's a lot that they do that you have to prepare for, you know, offensively and defensively. Alexa Philip, ESPN. Do you know you guys played Ohio State? I think it was 2019 at their place. Does this team that Kevin has now is there any similarities to that team, or how have you seen his program even evolve since then to the point where you've, you know, they started the season 19 and 0 and have had a really good year? I asked Dorka that uh, today. I, uh, yesterday, I said, Dorka, how many players are left over from from that team? You know, that was before COVID. Um, obviously, we're a different team. I don't think anybody on our team played in that game or played a lot, I should say. I don't remember. Could have, but I don't remember. Um, and I remember some <clears throat> some of their players played. And then they've had some people transfer in. and But they were um, – they were more built around um, – Kelsey Williams, you know, I, I think um, that team was really, really hard to play for different reasons. Um, they <clears throat> they played us really, really close. I know that, and we got a couple big, big buckets from Kristen Williams down down in the end. Um, I, I, yeah, I tried to look for I tried to look for some similarities and some clues, but there aren't many. There aren't many. So um, there's not much for them to build on from us, and there's not much for us to build on for them. Other than uh, at one time they were playing like they were the best team in the country at, at some point, and I don't think anybody's surprised that that they're here. 
Hey, Coach. Doug Feinberg, DAP. Uh, Two-part question for you. The first one is, can you expand a little bit on how special this is to be here with what you guys have gone through this whole season, obviously with injuries and illnesses and your own personal issues? And the second part is just, are you a big fan of, or are you a fan of the super regional format here of eight teams being in one spot instead of four and four spots? Uh, Yeah, a, a lot's going on this year, uh, and put that on top of what happened last year, and it seems like it's a two-year uh, ordeal that we've had. Um, you know, if, if you said to anybody in the country, you know, you have the National Player of the Year as a freshman, and she's going to miss half the season, their sophomore year, and the entire season, or junior year, um, it's a lot, and and then compound that with how many other injuries we had this year, and and yet to still be here and still be in a position to um, to do more, you know, um, it's a testament to uh, the coaching staff that I have, uh, the support people that we have. Um, Janelle, our trainer, and Hootie, our strength and conditioning coach, and, you know, J Jamel and Morgan and CD, everybody. Uh, it took a lot out of a lot of people this season. Um, so for us to be here is, is really, really, really something special that we're going to try to enjoy as much as we can. The super regional thing... Um, I think I think the jury's still out on that. Um, I know, um, you know, Seattle's a great place to be. I mean, I've been here enough times to know it's a it's a terrific place to be. The arena might be as nice of an arena as there is, you know, in um, in the entire tournament. Um, so that, but I think the logistics maybe make it make it a little tougher with how much time you can get on the court, how much. But that's just, you know, that's just NCAA stuff. You know, the biggest games of the year for your team, you have the least amount of time on the game court. And you have the least amount of time for practice. And you spend all your time either in this environment right here, talking with you people, or with the ESPN people, or with the radio people, and by the end of today and tomorrow, we will have spent more time with the media than we will have with the team on the court to get ready for the biggest games of the year. And this is nothing compared to the Final Four. So having the eight teams, I think, causes some issues for the host trying to balance all that out. I'm hoping that it works. I'm hoping it doesn't because I also think they're called regionals for a reason. And there's four regions in this country, and you'd like to have one in each region. And we'll see. I was hoping that this was like a one-year tryout. Hey, let's try this for a year, and let's see if it happens. And if it's great, let's keep doing it. And if it's not, let's go back. Instead, it's, I think, a three-year three deal. So now if it doesn't work, we're stuck with it. And if it works, then great, then great. Me, I'm just disappointed that, you know, there's eight teams here in Seattle, and one of them's from west of the Mississippi River. So I hope there's a lot of women's basketball fans here in Seattle, because I don't know how many fans of the teams that are here are actually here. I hope they are. Uh, it's a lot to ask of those people. I'm going to go to the Zoom room first, then I'll return to the room. Uh, Kurt B. from TSN, please introduce yourself and go ahead. Hey, Coach. It's uh, Kurt Bermester from TSN in Canada. Uh, just a quick question about Aaliyah Edwards. Uh, sh I think she shot over 80% in both games in the tournament so far, and I believe it was a career high in the first game at 28 points. I'm just wondering if you could talk about what, her progression and what just that just means for her to put up numbers like that come tournament time? Um, 
you know, we try to put Aaliyah in as many situations as possible to um, um, to do what she does best. Um, I think her uh, her commitment now to uh, run the floor harder, uh, get on the offensive boards harder, um, attack off the dribble better. Um, she's a terrific free throw shooter. Um, she's creating possessions off her defense. So there's a lot that uh, Aaliyah has added to um, to her game, and 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 that's why she's been able to do what she's been able to do. Um, you know, not just in these two games, but pretty much throughout the whole season. Joe Zone, WFSB3, Hartford. Uh, Gino, back when you had didn't even have enough players to play a game, hmm. after that moment, was there a practice, a game, a point where you said, okay, I think we could make, make a late season run? No. <laughs> no. Because it was like, hey, you know, you're getting another one of those. All right, so right after practice, hey, that was really good. How we do? Good. But this one can't practice for the next two days. <laughs> and it just kept repeating itself, repeating itself. Um, until It wasn't until we felt like Mm. when AZ said, I'm going to play, I'm going to be ready for the Big East tournament. When she said that, I started to feel pretty good. And when Caroline said, um, which was, I want to say maybe down at Georgetown, I forget where we were, but Caroline yeah. said, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm going to be okay. So me hearing those two things made me think, okay, if those two things do come true, we have a chance. How much of a chance? I don't know. I don't know. Um, just in case, I kept asking Paige if, if you're going to be ready. <laughs> I still kept getting no on that answer, but we got two out of three ain't bad, right? And that what Meatloaf said? Two out of three ain't bad? <laughs> you young people don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Hey, uh, Ben Pickman from The Athletic. Just following up on one of Doug's first questions, you mentioned all the adversity that you dealt with this year. Um, I was wondering if there was someone in the background, maybe not a player or a coach, that you feel like has really stood out or played an instrumental role in you getting here and what that person um, maybe did that sticks out in your mind. Um, well, I, I would say within the within the actual um, s um, scope of where we live, you know, so our entire practice facility. And if you include in that, you know, our medical staff, I would say that our medical staff probably were the unsung heroes in all of this because as you can imagine, it wasn't three kids going in and having the exact same thing and it was cookie cutter, you know, um, solutions. It was something different all the time, ranging from, you know, Carol being a, a magnet for elbows, you know, no matter where they're coming from. And, um, uh, uh, the wear and tear, and I, I, I think they're in the background all the time. And then, you know, they've got to do their job, you know, so we've got to rehab them. We've got to get them stronger. We, so, uh, like I said, Andrea Hootie and Janelle Francisco, you know, and uh, our team doctors, you know, Dr. Hall, Dr. Coiner, Dr. Arciero, and Dr. Alessi. We, we have all these people involved. Dr. Moss, who comes in, you know, and, you know, straightens them out. Sometimes successfully. Um, 
Nobody sees those people. And they have to deal with, you know, today's issues. Well, can I get a second opinion? Yeah, you can get five opinions. They're all going to come back exactly the same. And, you know, parents, why are you doing that? Why does this have to happen? So there's a lot that goes on that those people have to deal with that we don't even have any idea. And, uh, and as coaches, I've always had the philosophy, my only conversations with doctors or trainers, athletic trainers, has always been, tell me how long they're out. And if they say four to six weeks, well, for the next four weeks, I pretend like, they don't exist. So I'm not in there every week going, why aren't they ready yet? Why aren't they ready yet? Why aren't they ready yet? They don't tell me how to coach my team, and I don't tell them how to do their job. And they're the best that, in the country at what they do, and I trust them you know, uh, implicitly, and so do our players. And without them, uh, we, we finally, you know, th there's nutritionists now. We... We have access to these these kids. You know, I, I I think I think if the average person had access to everything these kids have access, I think you would be able to cut disease down by fifty percent in America. Their vitamins that they take, the food that they eat, the you know, who's looking after them, the tests that they have. These players wear more equipment on their body when they practice. You know, this monitor in the back that monitors, you know, this. This force plate that monitors how high they're going up. This wrap around their ankle that monitors, you know, how much time they're spending on their right side or versus left side. We have more data than, you know, NASA. <laughs> and I think it, in the end, we, we have as much information as you could possibly get to put these kids in the best position possible. And um, a year like this, we needed every, every single piece of that. And with that ringing endorsement on National Athletic Training Month, which is this month. <laughs> is we it, are is that this month? It is this month. There you go. We are unfortunately out of time. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. I appreciate it. Thank and we you. will have UConn student athletes in here momentarily. <laughs> Joining us from UConn are student-athletes Dorka Uhas and Lou lopez Sinishal, and we will go ahead and open the room for questions. Let's start right here. No, in front. Eden Lassie, Just Women's Sports. Um, this question is for both of you guys. Obviously, your team has been through a lot of adversity this year. Um, so what did you kind of learn about each other? And then also, you know, we see, like, one side of, of Gino. What did you guys kind of learn about him throughout this process? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think just when you have so much adversity, you know, talking about injuries, uh, you know, losses um, and like illness, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of emotional things that you have to be able to deal off the court and then obviously perform on the court. And I think for us, like, it was just a, a matter of, you know, finding out, you know, that we can rely on each other a lot, you know, that no matter what lineup we're going to have the next game. Because it was a lot of times it was uncertain. You know, we didn't know who's going to play. Uh, you know, what lineups are we going to have? Like, that we know that we could trust each other, that we're still going to get find a way to win. You know, I think um, that was huge for us. And just always kind of having that hope that, you know, one day we're going to have a full, healthy team and everything is going to, you know, work itself out. And I think that's what we did throughout the whole season, you know, just – always finding a way to win and just make sure that we always there to pick each other up. Um, or, you know, some ta some days we had some guys that had, you know, struggled a little bit. So we learned how to, you know, other people that can step up and how to win a, win a game with that. And then also, you know, at the end of the day, we finally at the point when we have the 10 healthy players. And I think it's just, we're, we're finally at that <coughs> moment when we're just like, wow, like if I didn't hopefully went away and then we just, we can just play our basketball and, just with our full team, so it's been a, it's been a lot of ups and downs, but I think it made us stronger and more together. Yeah, I think that also having to rely on each other and not just on the court but off the court. You know, even where we not doing basketball, being there for each other, and you know, sometimes getting our minds of basketball. You know, to to not um, 
because we know that it was a lot sometimes, you know, on the court and it was not always easy. I think that we were just there for each other all the time and that's definitely something that I felt right away even, you know, coming in the summer. Um, that a, a group that I didn't know I knew right away that um, everyone was, you know, there for each other. Roger. Roger Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American. Dorka, what, what are your emotions coming into a game where you're playing your old team? You said you left on very good terms. So mm -hmm. uh, are you nervous? Are you anxious? Are you excited? I would say I'm excited. You know, I think it's just, you know, I remember just seeing first of all, like the bracket coming out and, you know, like Ohio State popped up and, you know, everybody was like, ooh, like, like there's a possibility, you know, playing Ohio State. And, you know, I think for me, it's just excitement. I, as you said, there's, no like negative feelings about that. I still have a lot of friends, and I always have a lot of respect for you know my like old coaching staff and and every everybody that helped me there because at the end of the day, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. You know, I think just coming to the United States and spending my first year there, like I was very grateful, and I I'll forever cherish all the moments and you know friendships that I made there. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think it's also just a as a game as any other games for me you know it's definitely a little bit more excitement um, but it's it's still just you know a basketball game that is a very important game for all of us you know it's a win or lose game so that's how I'm preparing but hopefully you know after the game we can have some time to connect with my old teammates and and people that I know there so yeah Her. Mara with the Seattle Sports Commission uh, there's a special connection uh, in Seattle mm -hmm. with the Huskies having some former greats having called this arena home. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard a few wows and uh, oh my gosh's as you were walking into practice. How does it feel now that you're coming off the court, um, playing in Seattle, playing on this court, and now having come out of your practice? I think, I mean, I think it's really fun, you know. Uh, for a lot of us, it's our first time coming to Seattle. It is for me. And, you know, uh, knowing that a lot of alums, you know, are here and um, are supporting us and, you know, um, players like Sue that, um, you know, play all their career here. Um, I think it's really, you know, just, it's just really cool how, you know, basketball can bring you to so many cool experiences and, and moments like this. Um, and, you know, playing here in the Sweet 16, it's just um, something that a lot of us, you know, want um, as a basketball player. And we just feel really lucky to be here. Yeah. And I would just add, like, this facility is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, having a WMB have this amazing facility, it's just such a blessing. And, I mean, just going to the locker rooms, everything is so new. The gym is beautiful. So it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be fun to play here. Yeah. Definitely. Alexa Philpu, ESPN. Dorka, when you think about the reasons why you wanted to come to UConn in the first place and what that journey has been like since you transferred and what you wanted to get out of the experience and how far you've come through you know, personal adversity of your own, like with the injuries, what kind of comes to mind when you think about just that whole journey for you? Yeah, um, I mean, definitely being in the 616 six, was one of them why you know, I chose to come here just also, obviously, playing and competing for national championships, just being in the situation to, you know, put myself out there to help a team, I think that's definitely, like, the number one reason. And, you know, by all of that, I think just my my growth as a player and a person, you know, has been tremendous. And, you know, last year, I would just, you know, think back, it was just kind of like a learning year for me, just a lot of ups and downs, a lot of injuries and things I had to come through, but, you know, still learning a lot from obviously coach, my seniors, the players, and um, and obviously this year, just a whole different, you know, role that I have, just, you know, more dominant, obviously having more minutes, just a lot more pressure put on me, you know, in games, and I think just kind of having that last year definitely helped me to get there, you know, just obviously learning from Liv as a you know, a senior post player, just kind of learning the way definitely helped. But I'm obviously very blessed to have these two years. And, um, you know, I'm so grateful that how everything happened and obviously coach having me and just putting a lot of trust in me. And, you know, being in this situation to play the C16, it's just everything I've been, you know, dreamed of and just having amazing teammates. I think just overall, like this experience has been great. And, you know, and as I said, that's a, a part of it is just being at Ohio State. That's just my whole journey. When I think of my journey, it's not just UConn, but that three years, I think was obviously essential and necessary to, 
you know, just be the player I am today. And, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for, obviously, Ohio State and UConn as well. If you're in the Zoom room and you'd like to ask a question, please uh, use the hand raise function, and we'll be sure to get to you. Thomas? Thomas Costello, Langer in Holy Land. Thanks for your time. Coach Gino talked about how he was not thrilled about the matchup against Ohio State, mainly because of when the press is working, how well it can be. What have you both seen from that press and uh, kind of playing against it? Yeah, I think we've uh, worked a lot on it um, this week. You know, um, <clears throat> obviously Dorka knew about it, and I think throughout the whole year we um, seen. You know, if we were watching some games, we know that it was their main thing. So. Um, I think that we're going to be prepared for it. Um, you know, even in practice, we would play against uh, the practice players. You know, they would choose the, the most, you know, the, the bigger one, the at most athletic ones to make it harder for us. And um, I think it, it prepared us. And we know that if we, you know, find ways to break it, that's when we can go, you know, and have easy basket, um, go on transition. So that's the main thing for us is to, you know, keep our composure and not to, rush um, anything throughout the press and and you know once we break it that's when we can have you know even um, the shooters um, uh, in the perimeter and then also the the bigs running and 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 getting easy back buckets uh, Doug Feinberg the AP you two are uh, transfer portal success stories and there's the portals blown up in the last five years with hundreds if not thousands of kids trying to transfer what would you say to them I mean you've both had great careers since you transferred. What advice would you give someone who's looking to transfer? Is it finding the right school or taking your time? Or what would you tell someone who's looking to transfer right now and getting to have the same success you guys have had? Yeah, um, I would just say, you know, obviously before you transfer, just think about, you know, why you want to transfer and what you're looking, you know, obviously in a school. I think for me, it was definitely, you know, like I had a very, very strong reason, you know, what I want to get out of a transfer broker. Because if you think about it, there's, a lot of people getting in there and you know just not being able to find a school because there's just so many kids in there so you you got to be very specific you know what you need and why you're transferring in and obviously just for me you know obviously it was basketball so I definitely that was my focus that I want to go somewhere where I can be challenged more obviously and you know and I think it's definitely you have to find the right fit for you and that's there's always going to be priorities. Nothing is perfect. You know, it's, as they say, like the grass is not greener on the other side all the time. So you really, you know, I think you just have to make sure that you have everything right and you find the, the school that is, you know, going to actually be a great fit for you personally, obviously, educationally, and also uh, on the court. Yeah, I would add that, you know, trying to find the balance between not rushing, you know, the process and also not taking too much time. Um, you know, I, I, I've been through it last year and I know that it's very important, like, she, like Dorka said, to, to know where you're going, what your goals are, what, um, you want to achieve. But, um, at, at the same time, you know, you don't want to, um, rush anything. And, um, but if you take sometimes so much, too much time, you know, um, things can happen when you don't expect it. Um, so that's, I think you just need to find the balance, um, between those two things. Any other questions? Doug, go ahead. I just follow up, Lou. I mean, you came from Fairfield, which did not have the rich history that UConn has. When you came to UConn, were you thinking, okay, I'm going to step in and do what you did this year? Or are you think, okay, maybe I can fill as a role to help this team get where it can go? No, I've, I've always said that I would um, be ready to embrace any role. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting to, to have the same role that I had for four years. I knew that I was coming in the team with a lot of talent, um, a lot of talented players. So um, it's it was a, a, a mix of, of both, you know, believing in myself, knowing that, you know, I could play at that level, but also um, trying to, you know, transition between um, – a school like Fairfield and you know a school like UConn where the expectations are much higher um, and but I think that having the trust from everyone around me you know my teammates the coaches really helped me um, to go through this season um, um, even you know if it's not always easy to transition from two schools but I think that um, it gave me the confidence to be the player that I am right now um, for sure. 
Uh, Thomas Costello, Lane Grant, Dorga, last Ohio State question. Uh, I know you've been busy over the last two years, but what have you seen change about Ohio State in those two years since you left? Yeah, um, I think, you know, obviously the press, I think that my time at there, I don't think we pressed as much as they did. And they, it became their, you know, identity. I think, you know, just especially if they're going a smaller lineup, you know, going with four guards or, you know, just a smaller lineup, then that's when they really can get into that press. And I mean, they it gets a lot of easy buckets for them. So I think it works really well for them. But also, you know, I mean, having amazing guard play, you know, JC Sheldon and Th Taylor Mike said just a duo that is, you know, very deadly from anywhere on the court, just shooting threes, making plays for each other. You know, I think that's just became their identity to try to, you know, just do a lot of dribble drives and uh, moving quickly on the offense, and it works really well for them. I mean, uh, I, I followed a lot of games this season for them. Obviously, I still watch my friends play and always cheer for them, obviously, except this game. But um, it's, it's, I'm happy for them. They had a tremendous season so far. I think they, you know, the way they started and just the way they're coming off, obviously, this tournament has been, has been awesome for them. So, you know, I'm excited to play a, a different style of basketball. I think that's the fun part of, you know, tournaments. You play so many different teams from different conferences. Everybody has different identities. And I think, you know, we haven't really faced much of a, a pressing team, a fully, you know, very aggressive press throughout this season that much. So it's going to be exciting to see, you know, how we how we handle that and get through and break that press. But, you know, as Lou said, I think we're greatly prepared. Our coaches do an amazing job of scouting and uh, all of that. So it's exciting. You know, that's why you play basketball. That's why you come to the tournament to, you know, be challenged in different ways and try to. But, you know, our game plan is definitely going to be, you know, playing our game and not being rushed by them. So, but it's exciting. We have time for one more brief question. Um, Eden Lassie, Just Women Sports, for both of you guys. Um, your coach also brought up their press and how difficult it is. How do you guys go about kind of trying to replicate that and prepare for it in practice? And is that a challenging thing to do? Um, I think that, you know, it's it's going to be important for us to, when we face a team that presses a lot, to also press them, um, you know, not necessarily make it that easy. Um, and I think that it's... You know, we have a lot of players in the team that are able to, um, um, you know, get steals, get um, in the passing lanes and uh, try me, trying to be very aggressive on the defensive side um, to kind of like stop their offense and um, not make them go on, on transition.